Hello, everyone. How are you today? Hope you are doing very fine in your studies. Today's our lessons is focusing on reviewing past year exam questions. And for this time, we are looking at the winter 2017, part one of two. Without further ado, let's get started. Question number one, a gas is released at point Q in the apparatus shown where we have them within the indicator paper and this is the point Q. Which gas changes the color of the damp universal indicator paper most quickly? So the answer for this will be ammonia being alkaline, which is can turn the damp universal indicator paper to red with most blue. So the answer for this will be A. The diagram show liquid in a burette at the measuring cylinder. Which row shows the correct readings for the burette and the measuring cylinder? You can see here, this is about 27, 27.5. This is 27.8 for the burette. And meanwhile, on the other hand, we can see that this is 50, 40, and 40, about 42. The answer will be, this is 44. The answer will be, B. So the value of this for each of the lines will be 2 for the measuring cylinder. Let's look for the diagram. Number Question number 3. We show how muddy water can be purified. So muddy water will go through fine sand and then go through gravel and then go through small pebbles and then at the end of the day you can get the clean water here. So, which process for purifying the muddy water is shown? This is the process where we call it is filtration. So, the process in which solid particles in a liquid are removed by the use of a filter medium that permits the fluid to pass through but retain the solid particles. And the answer will be filtration. Which statement explain why isotope of an element have the same chemical properties? The answer will be they have similar chemical properties because isotope of an element has the same number of electrons as an atom of that element. And the electron arrangement is the same owing to the same chemical properties. The answer will be they have the same number of electrons in their outer shells. The formula of same ions are shown. You can see this is positive ions and this is negative ion. And which role is the formula not correct? So iron bromide is the chemical compound with the formula FeBr3. So in this question, he asks you which formula or which role in the is the formula not correct. So the answer will be C, iron 3 bromide. Iron 3, in actual fact, the chemical compound with the formula of FeBr3, not as stated here, Fe3Br. Diamond and silicon oxide both have giant structures. Which statement are correct? They are strong covalent bond in diamond, and both substances have very high melting point. So you can see the answer for this will be two and four. Which statement about metal is correct? Their physical properties include a shiny appearance, and they are malleable and ductile. So the answer will be. Layers of positive ion can slide over each other, making metals malleable. The gas hydrazine has the molecular formula N2H4. Hydrazine burns in air to form nitrogen gas and steam. Which statements are correct? 
So the answer will be one, two, and three. One mole of hydrogen with 72 decimeter cube of gases product when it reacts with oxygen at room temperature and pressure. And the empirical formula of hydrogen is NH2. The total number of atoms in one mole of hydrogen is 6 multiplying the Avogadro constant. And the answer will be 1, 2, and 3. Number 9. Copper 2 carbonate is broken down by heating to form copper 2 oxide and carbon dioxide gas. The equations for the reaction is shown. CuCO3 and to form CuO plus CO2. 31 gram of copper 2 carbonate are heated until all of the contents of the test tube have turned from green to black. The yield of copper 2 oxide form is 17.5 gram. What is the percentage yield? So in this case, you have to do a little bit of thinking and calculations. Okay, from this equation CuCO3, what can you find from CuCO3? Okay, in actual fact, given in the questions case, CuCO3 carry the actual mass is 31 gram. Meanwhile, CuO2 carry the actual mass given in the questions is about 17.5 gram. By knowing that, the formula to calculate moles is mass divided by molar mass. And to get the actual value of molar mass is mass divided by moles. You got to understand that 31 gram is the actual mass and is already given in the questions. From CuCO3 to CO2, you have to calculate what is the total molar mass for CuCO2. So, you got to refer to periodic table. Cu carry the molar mass of 63.546. Meanwhile, C carry the value of molar mass 12.011 and oxygen 2, oh sorry, oxygen 3 carry the value of molar mass 15.999. So, due to oxygen 3 here, you have to multiply oxygen molar mass, which is 15.999. Multiply by 3, you get the value of 47.997. For CuCO3, the total molar mass is equivalent to 123.554. So the total of 123.554 is add up the value of Cu plus C plus O3. Then you get the value of total molar mass for CuCO3 is 123.554. So in this question, the question is asking about what is the percentage yield of copper 2 oxide. So you got to calculate the value of copper 2 oxide molar mass. But Given in the question for total actual mass is 17.5. So, refer to the formula mole equals to mass divided by molar mass. And molar mass is actually mass divided by moles. Same thing, you have to refer to periodic table to calculate what is the total molar mass. So Cu, the total mass will be 63.546 and oxygen is 15.996. And the total molar mass for CuO, which is copper 3 oxide, will be 79.545. Based on the formula, 
percentage yield is actually actual mass divided by periodical mass. So based on the question given, we understood that total mass for CuCO3 is 31 gram given. Meanwhile, copper to oxide given is 17.5 gram for the actual mass. But somehow, in this context, we have to calculate what is the actual mass aside for taking that, knowing that 17.5 is actually the actual mass given in the question for the copper to oxide. So, after put the uh, formula with the actual value that we get, from this, we can derive that the actual mass for copper to for copper to oxide is actually 19.95. It's not what is actually stated in the question, which is 17.5 gram. To find the total percentage or percentage yield for the copper to oxide after the heating process of copper to carbonate, we have to apply this formula whereby percentage yield is equal to actual mass divided by theoretical mass. In this context, we have the value of 17.5 17 divided by 19.95 We and multiplied by 100, we can get the percentage yield of copper to oxide form after heating from copper to carbonate, we get the value of 87.7%. So the answer for number nine will be D. Next, question number 10. The diagram shows the electrolysis of aqua copper to sulfate. So which statement is correct? oxygen gas is produced as positive electron. And number 11, four solutions are separately electrolyzed and which two experiment is a colorless gas evolved at the end on? The answer will be one and four, which is B. And number 12, ammonia is made by reacting nitrogen with hydrogen in the presence of iron catalyst. And the reaction is exothermic, and the equation given is N2 plus 3H2 to form 2NH3. And the bond energies are shown in the table. So what is the energy given out during this reaction? So, as I already taught you in the previous questions, so you have to break down like N2 is actually N equals to N. We get the value of from the table 9 or 5, and 3H2 is actually. Uh, is 3 multiplied by, you get H here, 2 H here, that means 4, 3, 6. 3 times 4, 3, 6, you get the value of 1, 3, 4, 8. And energy out is 2 and H3, where you have this diagram, you have 3 H here and 1 N, where you have NH, 1 equation, 1 H, 1 equation, and NH, 1 equation. So you have to multiply 3 times 2, 3, 9, 0, 3, 9, 0 in the table. And this 2 is actually from this from, it, from this 2 at all. So you get the value of 2, 3, 4, 0. So when you get the formula, N2 is actually represent 9, 4, 6, 9, 4, 5 energy. And uh, 3H2 is actually value of 1, 3, 0, 8 uh, energy. And 2NH3 is actually 2340. Based on the formula, energy change is equal to energy in minus energy out. Where you have 2253, the total of energy in, and minus energy out, which is 2340, and then you get the value of negative 87 kilojoule per mole. So the answer will be D. The energy level diagram for the reactions between P and Q to form R and S is shown. 
which will describe the energy changes involved in the fight of reaction. The more energy is given out when the bond is in the products, a form that is needed to break the bond in the reactants. This is the reactions of exothermic. Number 14, copper to carbonate reacts with dilute sulfur acid. The rate of the reaction can be changed by varying the condition, which changes always increase the rate of these chemical reactions. And the answer will be 1 and 3. Increasing the concentration of sulfur acid and increasing the temperature. Number 15, which reaction is not affected by the presence of light? Honestly, you can see that a candle burning. The equation for the reversal reactions between the hydrogen and iodine to form hydrogen iodide is shown. And the forward reaction is exothermic, which statement is correct. An increase in the pressure has no effect, effect on the equilibrium position. 17. Chlorine displays bromine from the solution of potassium bromide. What is the oxidation agent in this reaction? First, Chlorine displays bromide from potassium bromide solution and chlorine acts as the oxidizing agent whereby bromide ion acts as a reducing agent. And number B, what is actually happened is chlorine displays iodine from potassium iodide solution. And 18, beryllium oxide reacts with both sulfuric acid and aqua sodium hydroxide. Which type of oxide is beryllium oxide? This is a process of N430. A student investigate two acid WNX. The same volume of WNX are reacted separately with excess magnesium. The student makes the following observation. So, Hydrogen gas is produced at a faster rate with W than with X. The total volume of hydrogen gas produced is the same for both acid. So, what we can say is that simplified W is a stronger acid than X. 20. A student is given an unknown solution, which two tests provide evidence that solution is copper to sulfate. First, we have to add in aqua sodium hydroxide. And secondly, we have to add dilute nitric acid, then barium nitric solutions, which is two and four. With that being said, thank you very much for listening. And by the way, subscribe, please subscribe to Jom Study Live YouTube channel. And we have customized notes available at weekends.ai slash jomstadila and another options you can access to beacon page is via jomstadila instagram that's all for today's presentation and thank you very much for listening